Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Chelsea and if you're new around here we like to do beauty related content on this channel. If that's something that you like then please hit subscribe and if you're already subscribed then please click on the little bell and you'll be notified of every time that I upload which is a few times a week. So in today's video we're going to be testing out the new ABH Norvina Pro Pigment Volume 5 palette. Well that is a mouthful. I'm really enjoying doing the two looks one palette thing for whenever I do like a palette review that's got quite a lot of shades. So we're going to be doing the same. I think I might do a voiceover for both of the looks just so then the video is a little bit quicker for you to watch because I don't want you to be sitting around for ages watching it. So we're going to be doing two looks one palette, we're going to do a voiceover, I'll do some swatches and then at the end I'll give you my final thoughts. So if you want to hear and see what I create with this palette then please stay tuned. So living the bare face life. So we've got the new ABH Norvina palette. I've been waiting for her to release a new one. Finally, we've got number five. And I think I prefer this colour story. At first I wasn't convinced because I thought it looked too much like a combination of one and two. But the more I looked at it, the more I needed it. And then I ordered it. And I'll tell you what, I ordered it on the US website because they've gotten rid of the UK ABH website. So you ordered it on the US one, £56. So it used to be £68. So I got it for £50. Six pounds and I got free shipping no customs the palette and I also got some freebies so I got um, some samples of the new luminous foundation which I actually might try today if I um if I can which is available in 50 shades by the way but I've not even tried the original and I do want to and also a free sponge which doesn't feel that spongy but once I dampen it, we'll test it out today. So I got all that for £56 and free shipping. So I just couldn't say no. And plus I cladded it anyway, so it didn't really matter. Enough of me rambling. Let's get into the packaging. So I literally love this packaging. So this is what the outer card is. When you think of Novena, you think of purples. But yeah, loving, loving this design. And then open it up. It's exactly the same packaging as the outer carton. And just look at that. It Oh, you can see all the bloody finger marks on it. I've even done my nails to match. How cute. But this is what the packaging looks like. Oh, look at that. The holographic moment, the pink and lilac ombre. Love it. It's plastic, so it's very good quality and it feels quite weighty as well. So yeah, and it's vegan and cruelty free. So this is Eyeshadows Impressed Pigments. So open it up. I'm going to show you a close-up shot because you know I love doing those. Also read about the palette. So on the website, it says that it's it's a professional grade artistry palette featuring 25 deluxe sized high performance shades with a gorgeous lilac colour story for creating soft to artistic look. The diverse shade range ensures enough supporting and complementary colours to create looks with a limitless variation and dimension, ranging from vibrant mattes to stunning neutrals deliver intense colour payoff. So it does say that there's a lot of shades which I will pop on the screen which are not intended for use around the media eye area because they are pressed pigments and I think in America they say that pressed pigments aren't meant to for your eye which absolutely baffles me because I know you've got to put the disclaimer but you know people are going to put it on the rise because it's an eyeshadow palette I don't really quite get like what else are you going to use them for I don't really understand that but so just a little warning if you have sensitive eyes I don't have sensitive eyes but if you do have sensitive eyes then this is probably not the palette for you and a lot of these shades probably will stain your eyelids as well so again if that's something that you're not really into or don't really like then you probably want to swerve that palette right so here we have Norvina 1 and at first I thought it was quite similar to this one because obviously this one was a purpley based one but then you have got reds, hot pinks and golds and stuff. Let's compare. So the one on the left is one and the one on the right is five. So they look really beautiful together to be fair but you can tell that they are different. Yeah it looks like number five is the lighter version of number one. But them two together side by side that looks like a banging palette. Um, and now let's compare it with number. At first I described four as like the lighter sister of number one but it's more pink to be fair so I think number five is like the sister. So obviously again on the left hand side is number four and on the right hand side is number five and again together they look absolutely beautiful. That would make a beautiful palette side by side. I think there are a few maybe similar shades because of you, you got like the pastel-y. Wow they're not really pastel pinks to be fair but I think 
there may be a few shades similar. I'm not too sure. I think there is similarities, but then you can tell a difference. Wow, this is making me want to play with number four and number one again because I've literally only played with these palettes once each since buying them, which is really bad because they're so expensive. So yeah, I am going to focus on number five today, but if you do want me to do like, see if I can do similar looks with one of the other palettes and number five or play with the other palettes again, like number one and number four, then do let me know and I will film that for you. Or if you want like comparison swatches or anything like that, like a bit rambling on for ages. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump off camera and then I'm going to do some swatches and we'll get into the eye looks. So these are all the colours swatched and oh my god I am actually in awe of the palette like this shade was literally like one swipe it was like a chrome like a liquid chrome and this shade took me by surprise as well that was absolutely beautiful that's a pressed glitter obviously I've not got any glitter glue on my arm so that usually they're quite self-adhesive but that didn't seem to swatch very self-adhesive um these ones didn't really swatch that well to be fair but then as you go on to the darker shades they swatch like a dream even these pastel shades swatch really well and you've got a lot of different textures in this palette I did really like swatching this palette and the mattes felt so smooth and finely milled and pressed and beautiful so yeah let's get into the look so we're going to start off with the P Louise base shade 2 like normal and we're just going to prep the eyes and I'm going to blend this out with just a flat brush and just really pat it in and then we're going to go into shade E5 and I'm going to run that along my lower lash line and then start to create that wing shape. And then I'm going to go into shade C3 and then I'm just going to pat that next to the E5 on the lid and start to blend it in to create that ombre effect. And I'm just going to take a small colour drain blending brush and just diffuse the edges and blend them into my crease. And then with another blending brush, I'm going to go into B3 and then I'm just going to place that on the inner part of my eye, but in the crease and then just start to blend it out a little bit towards the darker purple. And then I'm going to take B2 and I'm going to blend that in between B3 and C3 to again create that ombre and just make sure everything is all blended. And then I'm going to go back into that E5 colour and just re-intensify that dark purple shade on the outer edge. And now it's the case of just going back in with those colours, re-intensifying those colours and just making sure we've got that perfect blend. So just keep on at it until you're happy. And then to make sure everything's all blended and to help, I'm going to go into the matte white shade, so the A1, and just blend that round the edges, which will then soften it. And I'm going to go back into my P. Louise base, and I'm just going to not do a cut crease, but just lay that base down, ready for the shimmer. And now my favourite part, so I'm going to go into C2, which is a beautiful silver shimmer. And as you can see, I was really impressed with it. 
and I'm just going to go in with a brush and just reapply that shimmer all over the lid and trying to avoid where the purple is but just in that gap where we put the P. Louise base. And then I'm going to go back in with the E5 shades, the dark shade, and then I'm going to bring that across my lid to create a bit of a liner effect. And once I've stamped that shadow on, I'm then going to take a pencil brush and I'm just going to smudge it out so it's a bit more smoky. Ready for when we pop on our lashes and then the look is complete. So this is the end of look one. Let me know what you think. I am here for it. Literally so, so pretty. This shimmer on the lid is literally gorgeous. I didn't need to wet my brush. I did put a base down, just P. Louise base, because I just wanted to remove some of the purple shadow off the lid. So it's a bit of like a blank canvas. So it did have something to stick to, but even just with your finger, it was beautiful. I thought the mattes were fun. This eye turned out better than this eye, but I think it's because I knew where I was going with this one, whereas I didn't with this one. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, I absolutely love this. You don't want to have to take it all off and then redo it all um, for look two, but I'm going to. I also popped on um, the, sorry if you can hear my boyfriend again. I also popped on the um, foundation sample. So the luminous foundation, and I use 150W, which I thought was a really nice match, actually. I think it's fine. At first, I thought it might be like a shade dark, too dark. But when I've put on everything else, like my concealer, bronzer, blah, blah, it's actually a really good match to like my neck and stuff, I think. Hopefully, that's picking up on camera. But yeah, I actually really like that. It's um, It's got really good coverage. Not completely full coverage, like a more of a medium, but it's definitely buildable. So I can still see some of my blemish blemishes here and just my little blemish there. Um, but other than that, it's made my skin look so nice. The only thing is, because I've got oily skin and it's a luminous foundation, I don't quite know how long it'll wear. So um, I've still got some more left out of my little sample pot. If you've got the normal ABH foundation, let me know down below what you think of it, because I have oily skin. Like, will it work for me? Because it's quite an expensive foundation, so I don't want to spend loads of money on it and it not work. And I also use the sponge as well, which is a very... Oh, look how dirty it is. It's a very interesting sponge, and it's got, like, the little logo on as well which I thought was dead cute. I actually really like it. Once I've wet it, it's actually quite bouncy and um, it's like you've got a little handle and then that bit gets right up into like your under eye. Um, so yeah, I actually really like this sponge. I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. It feels really good quality as well. So yeah, so that's enough of me gassing. Um, I just use the same base stuff as what I've always been using for like the past few videos. So I'm not going to go through it all again. However, I did pop on, which was different, the Amrezy highlighter, which I have not used in a long time, but you can see it's very well loved. And on my lips, I've got the Morphe Sweetheart Lip Liner and also a Primark by Invitation Oily Crystal Shine Lip Gloss in the shade RS. VP, which is sort of like a sort of like a uh, movie one which I thought was really nice yeah so this is the end of look one and I'm gonna take it all off and go ahead for look two luckily I've got my monster with me okay, so we are ready for round two and now like usual I'm gonna take my P Louise base shade two like before and just blend it out but this time with a fluffier brush and just make sure everything is all seamless and then I'm gonna go into C5 and we're going to create a bit of a halo shape. So we're going to take that on the outer corner and then I'll take it on the inner corner and just build up that shadow. But as you can see, it's very pigmented anyway, so it didn't really need a lot to build it up. And then once we've done the edges, we're now going to connect it. So I'm just really going to gently just pat it along into my crease and connecting the halo. And then I'm just going to take a small blending brush. This was clean before I started, I promise. But we're just going to blend out those edges, not adding any extra product, but we just need it blended out ready for our next shade. And then I'm going to go into shade A5, and with that same small blending brush, I'm then going to put 50 on, 50 off, and try and blend out that edge a bit more. And now we're going to go lighter, so we're going to go into the A4 shade, and I'm just going to take a peach and cream blending brush, and then again do the 50 on, 50 off, and then just blend it out even more. 
and now I'm just going to go back and forth with my three brushes and the three colours and then just blend, blend, blend until I'm happy with it and intensify the colours. And then I'm going to go in with a larger fluffy morph brush and just with no extra product but just to help blend it out. I love the fact that there's a matte white shade in here. But yeah, I'm going to use that again to help blend down the edges so it's quite seamless. And then we're going to go in with the P. Louise and Mimi Mitchell Acid Rain Blank Canvas Paint with the matching brush. This is the best brush for like cut creases and things like that. And I'm just going to dip dab my brush into it and pop it onto the back of my hand so then it really thinens out the brush. And then we're going to pray. We're going to pray that this goes well because I'm not very good with cut creasing and shit like that. And I'm just going to swipe it along the lash line and then I'm going to eventually build it up and just keep looking up until it creates that shape, you know, when it appears at the top. Yeah, it wasn't working at first, but then we got it to work and then that's how I created the shape initially. And then just a little tip, I always take a really fine paintbrush and dip into my darkest colour and then just go at the top of the crease. And then I'm just going to blot out the crease just to make sure that there's no more blank canvas, like excess paint on my lid so that it doesn't smudge. And then we're just going to blend it out a little bit and just include some of the dark shade and just begin to really feather it in so it looks a bit more ombre. And I'll just spray my brush and then we're going to go into C4, which is a beautiful shimmer shade and oh, look at that shimmer. And then I'm just going to tap it over with my finger and then I'll go back into the brush and really get those edges. And then to make it more multi-dimensional, we're going to go into B1 and also the glitter D2. And then I'm just going to pat that on top just to add that extra dimension and then just feather it in a bit more either side to make it more blended. And then what goes up must come down. So again, I'm just going to use that dark shade first just to do the outer and inner edge. And then we're just going to blend it all through with a bit of C3 and B2. And just connect it all with a bit of the A1 white. And then, yeah, just make sure it's all blended seamless. And then we're going to create the little spotlight in the middle of the lower lash line just by placing a bit of C4 in the centre. And then we're finished. And there we have it, here's the second look. We've gone for more of a spotlight, halo sort of eye this time, which is completely different from what I'm usually doing because I never do this type of eye because it's still a work in progress. But I actually liked how this came out. Let me know down below what you think of both the looks. So, my final thoughts on the palette. First of all, I absolutely love the packaging with these palettes because look, they just, the mirror stands up by itself if you do wanna use it or if it's something that you take away with you. Or even better, you can actually lie them completely flat. And I don't think a lot of people know that. So I really like the Surly packaging. It feels premium quality. Really good. So that's that. The colour story, I am here for it. Absolutely love this colour story. You've got your pops of colour. You've got your pastels. You've got your beautiful shimmers. You've got a range of different shimmers from purple to whitey gold to gold to copper to peach to more purple, pinks, so silvers, so many different looks that you can create. And I like the fact you've also got a neutral side as well however the neutral side looks brown it's not really brown it's more aubergine it's got purple undertones to it so don't be mistaken and think that they're brown shades because when they're actually when I've put them on the eye they're not brown at all they're more like aubergine and I feel like that shade and that shade are both quite similar so E5 and C5 are quite similar they look they look pretty identical really. Maybe E5 is a shade darker, but on the eye I feel like they look like pretty much the same. And I also feel like this 
shadow here. Where am I looking? E4. I don't really like that shade, if I'm honest, because where these are like aubergine purple undertones, I feel like that needs to go with the brown, but that's just my personal preference. Other than that, I think they're really beautiful. I feel like the formula as well was really good. I don't feel like I re had many problems printing it out. It went a little wincy bit patchy here. I think that was me, not the eyeshadow. Really, really pleased how they performed. Loved both looks that I create, and I could probably think of quite a few more. There's so many different colour combos that you can use, especially with the different shimmers and things like that. Yeah, that is it. Uh, that's all I've got to say. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on the Norvina Pro Pigment range and what one's your favourite. If you want me to do a comparison to this one and the other two that I've got, so Volume 1 and Volume 4, then do let me know and I'll get that video up for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe to my channel. We've hit 600 subscribers. Which is really exciting. So thank you so much for subscribing. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.